Scientists suggest that the Sphinx statues of Egypt may have been shaped by natural erosion, challenging the long-held belief of their purely human origins. The iconic Great Sphinx of Giza, standing 20 meters tall and 73 meters long, is now thought to have been partially formed by the ancient climate. Erosion from wind and sand, integral to the Sahara's landscape, may have carved out the initial form of these monumental structures. Researchers conducted laboratory experiments to simulate the wind erosion that could have sculpted the Sphinx's basic shape thousands of years ago. Using a combination of soft clay and harder materials, the experiments aimed to mimic the erosion of rocks in northeastern Egypt. When subjected to fast-flowing water streams, these clay models revealed Sphinx-like shapes, supporting the erosion hypothesis. The findings suggest that yardangs, naturally occurring rock formations, could have been the precursors to the Sphinx statues. Some existing yardangs have been observed to resemble seated or lying animals, hinting at a natural origin for the Sphinx's form. Ancient Egyptians may have been inspired by these natural formations and carved them into the majestic statues we associate with their civilization. The study introduces a novel intersection of geological processes and human artistry in the creation of the Sphinx statues. This new theory posits that the ancients might have recognized the shapes in nature and intentionally enhanced them. If the erosion theory holds, it could reshape our understanding of how the ancient Egyptians interacted with their natural environment. The researchers' use of water in their experiments parallels the wind's natural sculpting force, albeit a more controllable element for laboratory conditions. The resulting sphinx-like shapes from the experiments lend weight to the theory that erosion played a significant role. The potential natural origins of the Sphinx could provide insights into ancient Egyptian mythology and their reverence for natural and animal forms. This theory could also impact how we preserve and interpret other ancient megalithic structures around the world. Understanding the natural components in the Sphinx's creation could lead to different conservation strategies for the statue. The research highlights the possibility that the ancient Egyptians may have been opportunistic artists, utilizing what nature had already crafted. Erosion's role in shaping the Sphinx could also suggest that other ancient works may have similar origins, blending human effort with natural artistry. The study might prompt a re-evaluation of the timeline and techniques thought to be used by the ancients in creating such monuments. Acknowledging natural erosion as a co-artist with the Egyptians opens up a new dialogue between archaeology and geology. The realization that yardangs may have served as templates for the Sphinx challenges our perception of ancient technology and environmental manipulation. It raises questions about the extent to which other civilizations might have used natural landforms as foundations for their architectural endeavors. The implication that not all features of the Sphinx were meticulously planned by humans adds a layer of complexity to its history. This discovery could be a stepping stone to uncovering other geological phenomena that influenced ancient cultural expressions. As geologists and archaeologists work together, a more comprehensive picture of the past's landscapes and how they shaped human societies is emerging. The concept that ancient Egyptians may have edited natural formations into more intricate works could be applied to other historical contexts. This research may inspire a search for similar geological formations that could have influenced ancient art and architecture elsewhere. The blending of natural and human-made features in such statues presents an intriguing narrative of the Earth's and humankind's co-creative processes. If the erosion theory is further validated, it might lead to a search for the origins of other ancient structures thought to be purely man-made. The study reaffirms the importance of interdisciplinary approaches in unraveling the mysteries of ancient civilizations and their monuments. The erosion hypothesis respects the ingenuity of ancient Egyptian culture while highlighting their possible reliance on natural phenomena. By considering the role of natural erosion, the study adds depth to our understanding of the Great Sphinx's enigmatic presence. This nuanced view of the Sphinx's creation reflects a broader trend in science and humanities to appreciate the interconnectedness of cultural and environmental factors. A greater appreciation for natural geological processes in historical contexts could influence future archaeological and historical investigations.
reconsidering the Sphinx's creation story through the lens of natural erosion underscores the dynamic relationship between ancient peoples and their landscapes. Cultural icons like the Sphinx may owe as much to the random forces of nature as they do to human intention and design. These insights into the Sphinx's possible origins highlight the sophisticated ways in which ancient societies may have engaged with their environment. The study could spark a renaissance in how we study ancient artifacts, looking for the signature of natural processes alongside human influence. Such a perspective enriches the narrative of human history, blurring the lines between the crafted and the coincidental. This fresh look at the Sphinx challenges traditional narratives and invites us to see ancient wonders in a new light, shaped by both man and nature. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more such videos.